Good morning, evening, or afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back to PSP, aka Pawn Shop Pistols, the only YouTube channel where every firearm I review is purchased from a pawn shop. Today, we're taking a look at the High Point CF380. High Point Firearms, also known as Strassel's Machine Incorporated, is an all American firearms manufacturer located in Mansfield, Ohio. All of their firearms are manufactured in several different locations across the state, so if you're in the market for a new firearm and you prefer things made in America, High Point might just be the choice for you. Let's take a closer look. Now before we get into this, what's the first thing that we need to do? That's right, make sure it's safe to handle. I know it's empty, but you don't. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to inject the magazine with this button here. All right, that looks good. Now we're going to rack the slide. Okay, that's clear. Nice. Well, most gun enthusiasts hate them, but I'm fascinated by high points. As a company, their whole goal is to make functional, safe, and affordable firearms for people on a budget. That's a company I can get behind. I picked up this firearm for $89.99 at my local pawn shop. That's right, a firearm under 100 bucks that isn't a pellet or a BB gun. Talk about a deal. Now, High Point actually makes two versions of this pistol. The C9, which is the 9mm, and the CF380, which is what we have here today. The main difference just being the caliber of ammunition. 380 ammunition is a little bit smaller than 9mm, but still viable for home defense. A bullet is a bullet is a bullet. I mean, even a 22 can be lethal if you know what you're doing. You don't need a 45 to defend yourself. Even a little 380 like this can save your life should the situation arise. The CF380 has a barrel length of three and a half inches. You'll see it comes to about here when we uh, disassemble it later. It weighs a whopping 29 ounces, unloaded. That's heavy, but that heaviness also helps with recoil. Now, while you'll find more and more firearms produced with uh, what's called a striker fire action, this firearm has what's called a blowback action instead. If you want to see a good example of a striker fire action pistol, uh, I... Um, reviewed my SAR-9. I'll go ahead and post the link in the description there. But uh, without getting too technical, I'll uh, do my best to explain what a, a blowback design means. So uh, striker fire pistols, there's a mechanism inside of them. There, there's a spring that when you rack the slide, once you squeeze the trigger, it releases the striker to hit the bullet, which ignites all the... Uh, <clears throat> stuff inside of it and uh, leaves out the barrel. Um, a blowback design like this one uh, obtains the energy from the motion of the cartridge case as it's being pushed uh, through the rear by the expanding gas uh, created by firing the pistol. So think of it more like the bullet casing is a piston uh, being driven by the gases when you fire. Whereas a striker fired pistol has mechanical components to help eject the cartridge and load the next bullet into the chamber, a blowback design relies almost entirely on the energy of the bullet itself. Make sense? I didn't think so. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. So this is a polymer frame design, but with its weight, I mean, it could fool you into thinking that it's fully made of metal. You know, this is... This is not a light gun. Uh, we've got the eight round magazine here. Uh, you can get a 10 round uh, if you like. Uh, High Point likes to save money by using the same magazines on the C9 as well as this model. I have heard from uh, other reviews that this does sometimes cause malfunctions uh, when you're trying to fire down at the range or uh, you know, wherever you're at, but that sometimes it results in multiple feeds or uh, the casings just not uh, loading into the chamber properly. But uh, we'll test that when we're down at the range. I should mention a huge plus also to getting a high point uh, used is their warranty. High Point offers a lifetime guarantee on all of their firearms, whether you're the first owner or the 20th. They actually have a form on their website. Uh, you can fill in and register uh, the serial number. And if anything goes wrong, they'll repair it. Broken parts, outdated springs, they, they cover it all. It's a huge plus when buying uh, High Point used. 
It's actually a wonder why more people don't like them. I mean, affordable, 100% made in America, and a lifetime warranty. I mean, what's not to like about that? Well, it looks like we got standard sights here. I'm, I'm actually missing one of the dots on my sights, but uh, yeah, we'll see if that really makes a difference or not. So nothing too fancy, pretty bare bones, which I'm not complaining about. I prefer to use my firearms without a bunch of uh, extra bells and whistles. Though you can purchase a few accessories from High Point if you want to. They have a ghost ring sight and uh, even a little laser that you could mount here if you'd like. This High Point also has some nice safety features too. Anything that makes a firearm safer to use is a great addition to its design, in my opinion. Uh, it has a magazine disconnect safety, which means that if you have a bullet in the chamber, but the magazine isn't loaded, it won't fire. So I'll demonstrate that right now. So we'll put this magazine in here. All right. So the gun knows there's nothing in the chamber. So with the magazine in here, you can't rack anything unless you have another bullet ready to feed. So in order to rack it now, we have to eject this then let it slide, then load it in. So the magazine disconnect, let's say you have one in here and uh, you know it's your last bullet, whatever your magazine falls out, whatever you want, and uh, you try pulling this, it's not gonna fire. I mean, it's you can squeeze it, it's not gonna go anywhere. So in order for that to fire, it's got to have a magazine in it, then it'll fire just fine. Again, we'll eject that out a little bit. Now, there's a lot to be said about that feature. Some people claim it's a drawback, particularly in high-stress situations where maybe you're scrambling to load your magazine and you don't fully secure it. I think that uh, if you're well enough uh, trained in your particular firearm, that wouldn't be an issue. But... I also haven't been in the situation that I just described, so I can't say from personal experience whether this would be a, a help or a hindrance. Now next we have the slide safety, uh, which is not ambidextrous. All right, so we got the slide lock here. It does not uh, have one on the right side. So if you're a lefty, it might be a bit of a problem. Speaking of the slide safety, it ties directly into... Uh, how we disassemble it. One of the biggest drawbacks of disassembling a high point is the process. Uh, one of the ways that they're able to keep them so cheap is by, you know, using their uh, machined parts. And it can be a, a little difficult for, for people who have never done it before. Okay, so we have this punch, the, which actually came with my SAR that we're going to use. And we've got the uh, rubber mallet here that we're going to use. And uh, I've also got a roll of duct tape. <laughs> Don't worry, we're not going to be wrapping anything on the gun. Uh, we're just going to be setting the gun on the duct tape uh, while we take it apart. All right, so we're going to pull the slide all the way back to this notch right here. We're going to put the safety up there, lock that open. Hopefully my camera picks this up. There's a little pin right inside of here. Hopefully you guys can see that. But it's accessible on both sides. And I'm actually going to use it on this side because my punch can fit in that hole just a little ways. So what we want to do is go through that hole there. There's a little rod inside of here, and that's what holds this thing together. So uh, I'm probably going to mute this so it doesn't blow the mic. Okay, so we got the little rod out. Don't lose this. This is very important. We're going to set this by the punch. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take this off. We're going to eject the magazine, if you haven't already. And we're going to let it rack forward. And now we're going to dry fire this, so that way it takes the tension off the spring. Otherwise, when you lift this off, stuff might just go flying anywhere. Don't ask me how I know that. So remember our magazine disconnect safety. So we're going to load this up, dry fire it, okay, eject. Now we're going to pull the slide to the left 
and also lift up on it at the same time. Okay, so we're gonna just, there we go. A Little bit more, there. So it's not too bad once you do it a few times, but for someone who's in, you know, just getting into uh, buying a firearm, it can seem a little complicated uh, at first. But while we've got this taken apart, let's take a look inside. Doesn't look too bad. Uh, you can see a few machining marks. A little bit of corrosion maybe from the uh, just the metal rubbing up against itself. And we've got some machining marks here. I'm sure you guys can see that. A little on the top. There's the 380 ACP. I mean, this is this is incredibly light. You know, this feels like I'm holding an airsoft gun. All the weight is in the slide. All right, now that we uh, have it taken apart, let's see if I can get this put back together in a reasonable amount of time. So we're going to put the spring back in here, just like that. It's got a little housing back here that it kind of snugs into. All right, this is the tricky part. We have to put this back on. The spring has to hit right here, and there's no notch for it. So if you're pushing at too much of an angle, the spring is going to want to come up and uh, pop out through the hole here. So while we're doing that, this little back piece here has to go in here. So a couple of things to watch while you're reassembling it. Let's see if I can do this now that the cameras are rolling. Nope, popped right out from the front there. All right, takes a little bit of practice. Let's try it again. All right, there we go. And we're going to do a function check real quick now that we've got this on. All right, it seems to rack okay. And because we have that magazine disconnect safety, we're not able to check the trigger until we load this. Okay, the lock works. Okay, seems like it reassembled all right. Now we have to put this uh, little pin back in over here. So we're going to pull the slide all the way open and lock it right there. And there's that little hole right there. We're just going to line it up. And I'll go ahead and mute this part so it doesn't blow out the mic. and flush that's looking pretty good let's test it all right that looks good so that's how you disassemble and reassemble it now let's head down to the range normally when i go to the range i like to shoot the uh, fiocchi target max but uh, i was doing some research on uh, some more affordable ammunition and I discovered this company called New Republic and they have a training and range ammunition in this 380 here. This is a uh, 95 grain uh, full metal jacket uh, brass round and I just wanted to kind of see how these rounds hold up. I've never heard of New Republic before so uh, I'm excited to see how well they run.
this is twice. Uh, we've got two through this, and this is what it's doing. It's a failure to eject, but also trying to feed. And this seems to be a pretty common problem with uh, the magazines with high points. So when it's shooting and not malfunctioning, it's pretty damn accurate. Uh, I had to clear a couple malfunctions, obviously, but I mean, this is at seven yards. It groups really well. I mean, the, the sights on this, I'm actually missing the uh, dots here, but it, it's still super accurate. So we're gonna see if maybe it was just you know, a malfunction here and there, and maybe we've uh, All right, so this is uh, 10 yards, not quite as accurate in the center, but the grouping is still really good. It just needed to shake out some rust. We've got another failure to eject on the feed here. And we're gonna play that and keep going. Another one. All right, we've got another failure to eject. You can see the casing sticking out right there. Now we're going to clear it and try it again. Well, <laughs> that was really bad. <laughs> I, um, I've never had a firearm malfunction so badly, so frequently, just over and over and over. I mean, the first bullet went out and immediately we had a malfunction. Immediately. We had two malfunctions on the first magazine. Second magazine, no problems. Third magazine, we had another malfunction. In the fourth magazine, we had three separate malfunctions. I mean, man, what must this poor little 380 have seen in its life to just malfunction so badly? Oh, man. I, I wanted to be so biased. I wanted to just, you know, take all the naysayers on about high point. I wanted to take this to the range. It was just going to blast through everything. It was going to be perfect. And then say, yeah, hey, you know, the high point was great. But, uh, oh, man, that was really, really bad. I mean, we, uh, I, I only got through four magazines, um, and then we decided to, to just call it <laughs> on the, on the high point. Now, as I stated earlier in the video, there are some people who claim that all the malfunctions that, that we experienced are purely the magazine's fault. Uh, I'm going to be interested to see what high point says. I, I'm going to reach out to them and, uh, let them know, Hey, I just purchased your firearm and it was really rough. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm going to be putting the uh, lifetime warranty to the test here. I mean, even on other reviews that I have seen of this, I don't think I've ever seen as many malfunctions as I had um, at the range. I've seen, you know, the fabled triple feed. I've seen, you know, failure to eject. Um, but just the frequency in which I experienced them that was something else, but there's a light at the end of the tunnel. This thing, when it fires is so accurate. Uh, I mean, it was buttery smooth. 
every time I pulled the trigger, there was almost no kickback. It, it was almost like I was firing a twenty two, uh, maybe even closer to just like a high powered airsoft pistol. This thing just it's it feels really good when you shoot. Even though I'm, you know, missing one of the sights here, that didn't seem to uh, be a problem for me. The, when it fired, it fired really well. It might be the most accurate I've ever shot with a handgun. And, uh, man, I, I just hope that it wasn't something inside of the firearm that was causing this. I, I hope High Point is able to uh, reach back out to me. And I'm able to get this sorted. But, um, oh, man, I've already had a nickname for this. I've, uh, I've called it the Atari. Um, I'll put a little picture here and explain why. <laughs> I'm sure you can, uh, I'm sure you can see. Uh, I'm just gonna have to put the final review score on hold until I see what high point wants to do. I would love to send this into them, have them completely clean it, send it back to me, and then I go to the range and it just kicks butt. That's what I would love to see. So I guess this will be a part one. Oh man, I'm so disappointed. I really, really want to like this thing, but currently I can't recommend it. I mean, the whole point of my channel is to encourage people to buy firearms secondhand. You know, go down to your pawn shop, see what they have. And yes, this firearm only cost us $89. But I mean, man, it's just rough. It's just rough right now. But you know what? I'm going to send it in to High Point. I want to see what they say and uh yeah <laughs> come back for part two uh this has been psp bon shop pistols thank you guys for watching and uh be sure to come back for part two because we're not done with this thing yet no 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 we're gonna be doing a part two for sure thanks guys see you next time